Good morning, everyone. Six minutes after the hour, 6 a.m. It's Thursday, finally Thursday, March 12th, 2020, 28 degrees outside. Shane Matobin, half man, half amazing. Still sponging off the relatives up in Cantaloupes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> They're getting some free meals and uh, uh, just goofing off with the grandkids, having a good time up there. How you doing, man? I'm uh, trying to stay warm. It's it's cold up here. And uh, BC now has its first uh, declared death from uh, coronavirus, so you know, because you have been asking. Yeah. And, and uh, 34 confirmed cases now in, in, uh, in, in Vancouver. In, yeah. Well, we have our we have our first one here. Um, we have our first uh, Montana case. Where? Uh, uh, although the uh, person is in Maryland, but we don't know if they got the, they, we don't know if they got the uh, virus here or somewhere between here and Maryland. So wow, that's uh, really it's making a, it social. <laughs> I know it's a seventy year old woman. Uh, she's being treated in Maryland for the virus. She was uh, uh, tested and uh, found to be positive, and uh, so. We uh, we don't know if uh, she had it when she left here, or if uh, she contracted it somewhere between here and Maryland, or in Maryland. So, mm. so it, even though uh, she's in Maryland, it's still uh, uh, put on uh, Montana. It's still a Montana case because it's a Montana resident, I guess. So anyway, you know where, the one thing we, we haven't talked about. Mm. The one thing we haven't talked about is as a issue with this virus, which now the World Health Organization has declared a global pandemic, mm -hmm. as you know, yesterday, yes. is that, um, you know, when we talked yesterday about it, uh, how a virus goes into the body and directly enters the cell to, to influence the DNA. Mm -hmm. And it, what it does, rep, it replicates, it's, you know, replicates in, in the DNA uh, you know, or attaches to the DNA. Yeah. And, and, I'm wondering what, when you think, like, where would this woman get it, right? Anyway, so... You, My guess would be spread. an airport. My guess would be an airport and restroom. So it's <laughs> how it's spread and, and, and so forth. And I'm wondering if one problem that no one's talked about or asked any of these great scientists, and I do believe they're the best in the world, nor have they brought up, is the replication problem that viruses create. Mm -hmm. Because if it replicates... You can't create a, um, a, a vaccine for it. Yeah. Well, that's terrible. That's really scary. Well, yeah, yeah. If it uh, mutates or, uh, you know, Replicate. changes, yeah, changes, yeah. then, uh, yeah, you're kind of out of out of luck. So. Yeah, it becomes a very tenuous situation. Yeah. Anyway, just a thought to justify all the mm -hmm. concern that everyone has as we've mm -hmm. watched this grow in compared to the regular. Uh, you know, flu virus, which is also a type yeah. of coronavirus and mm -hmm. been around since 1909 and so forth. So yeah. We'll, well, we'll wander on. And, and I guess that they're looking for spring weather and 20, you know, 20, 80 degrees to uh, kill the little sucker. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> so every day we get closer to a cure of the sun. <laughs> so tell us about the weather now. There's a good segue there. Well, <laughs> well, we have some weather. <laughs> Let's see. For Thursday, guess what? A 20% chance of snow before 8 o'clock this morning. Patchy fog before 10 a.m. And uh, so uh, that's uh, we're going to have uh, sunny and high near 39 today. So um, a little cooler than uh, we've had in the past. But it's going to get colder as uh, as the week goes on. Uh, Thursday, uh, Thursday night is going to be partly cloudy with a low around 19. And then on Friday, uh, increasing clouds high near 35 and uh, gusty winds up to, uh, over 20 miles an hour Friday night, 40% chance of snow cloudy with a low around 17 and uh, new snow accumulation of less than half an inch. But Saturday, uh, Saturday is going to be the big day snow, uh, high near 27, um, uh, chance of precips, 80% new snow accumulation of less than one inch is possible. But Saturday night, snow likely cloudy with a low around five degrees. And chance of precips, 70% new snow accumulation, one to two inches on Saturday night is what they're looking for. And then on Sunday, snow again likely uh, cloudy with a high near 23. 
And then on Sunday night, chance of snow again, mostly cloudy with a low around 8 degrees. And uh, Monday, snow likely mainly before noon, partly sunny with a high near 28. And then Monday night, a chance of snow again, mostly cloudy with a low around 8 degrees. And then on Tuesday, slight chance of snow, mostly sunny, high near 36. Tuesday night, mostly cloudy, low around 14. And then on Wednesday, slight chance of snow, mostly cloudy, high near 36. So we're going to get uh, snow and snow and more snow, it looks like, Shane. So get uh, get the old snow blower out and get ready to go. And now with the Dow Jones down 5.1% 5, 5. yesterday, down 24% for the month, we're officially now technically a bear market. We are. Yeah. So we've moved from a trader's market to a bear market. Now, which that means all the short positions that were held are probably gone. So yeah. no, there's no support there for the market. And the puts in the futures market have been devastated and aren't no, no new ones are being purchased or sold, rather. So now you're dependent on real economic news for this market to turn because the normal tools that the boys on the in the game would play are, you know, it's a bare bottom. They're used up. They're they, used up, baby. Uh, yeah, yeah. They they phoned a friend. They bought a vow. They, <laughs> they're done. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So it's going to be yeah. it's this this month is going to be interesting yeah. to see yeah. where we are where we're at. Mm -hmm. You know, just now here at the middle of March till the middle of May. Yeah. And we and and the eyes are March. We don't get to see. Yeah. It's Sunday. Well, uh, we got a debate coming up on Sunday as well between the two uh, big guys. Oh. Uh, Bernie didn't get out of the race, uh, not out yet, but I think uh, after Tuesday, guys. after Tuesday, I think uh, I think Bernie's going to see the light. Yeah. Well, the big question is this: How you know, unimportant this debate is? Will they have chairs? Well, yeah, yeah, that's it. So, will it turn into a town meeting? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think in the last debate, uh, Biden got to speak something like 17 minutes, so he'll he'll get half the time this time around. So yeah, exactly. We'll yeah. see how far mm -hmm. how far that goes and how heated it gets. So, temperatures around the area right now: Livingston is 27 degrees, Manhattan is 26, Three Forks 27 degrees, Gallant Gateway is 23, Big Sky is 18, West Yellowstone 24, Gardner is 23. Ennis is uh, 28, and at the airport in Belgrade right now, it's 27 degrees. We're right at 28 degrees here in our downtown studios. And uh, uh, road conditions around the area, if you're going from Livingston to Billings, don't. Um, just postpone that for another day. You don't want to go over there. <laughs> if you're going from Billings to Livingston, you don't want to do that either. And uh, you don't want to go from Big Timber up to Harlottown or... Uh, from uh, Billings up to Roundup, or you don't want to go over Homestake Pass. Uh, you don't want to go from Townsend to Helena, and uh, you don't want to go from uh, Townsend to White Sulphur Springs either, or up to Great Falls, or even to Missoula. So just stay <laughs> the hell home, <laughs> all right? Because <laughs> it, we're going to get some snow all over the area. There's going to be ice and high winds and patchy uh, uh, black ice and all that stuff, but uh, you just don't want to deal with, you know? No. Nope. Don't even go there. So Don't even go there. Man. Yeah. Well, our poll question yesterday, is it over for Bernie? And 40% uh, of you said, yes, it is. Bernie is done. And 38% uh, said, don't really care either. We'll lose in the general election. And uh, another 10% said, no. He still has a shot with a brokered convention. Well, I don't know if broken convention is uh, probably still possible, I guess. Could be, <laughs> but pretty remote because you got the super delegates that are going to jump yeah, in. Yeah, you have the super delegates. They're going to jump in for Biden. There's no question there. So That's right. I and mean, and, uh, and this turnaround by Biden is, you know, it's, it's like Trump, basically, right? I mean, it yeah. really is. Well, I don't think it's a turnaround He's, for him. I think it's a total rejection of Bernie is what it is. I mean, if you only got two choices, well, you got yeah. you still got Tulsi Gabbard, and 
you know, as I've said many times, if I had to look at a Democrat for four years, I'd just soon look at her rather than Biden or Bernie, either one. Oh, you know, so either one. Yeah. But uh, Biden's at 775 in delegates and Bernie 633. So, yeah, yeah they're not that far yeah. apart. If Bernie could oh, yeah. take Florida. Yeah, if Bernie could take Florida and, um, you know, a couple others, uh, he'd be right back in the thick of it, you know. But I don't think that's going to happen. But. No, but uh, Warren and Bloomberg and and Buttigieg have a uh, hundred and twenty, yeah, six, and they're so, going to give those to Bernie, so the, by, to Biden, yeah, or uh, to Biden. I mean, yeah, sorry. So, yeah. so that puts him at seven, eight, nine hundred. So yeah. he's he needs a thousand ninety mm-hmm. delegates plus one. <laughs> yep. So I think he'll be okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Biden's dementia will cause him to withdraw. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but uh, yes, the Dems are uh, getting their act together. Uh, done before he started, Bernie. That is, Bernie's done. Uh, but uh, what about his supporters? Are they done? Uh, Bernie's uh, feeling the burn again, and he was done before he started. No way the DNC was going to let him win. And I would agree with that. I think they were against him from way back. Oh yeah, way back with yeah. Hillary. Uh, yeah. There's no way they want uh, they want this guy anywhere near the Oval Office. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, let's yeah. hope not. <laughs> well, probably so. Yeah. All right. Uh, our poll question today: Are you happy with the government response to the coronavirus? And eighty percent of you said yes. They acted faster than other countries, and I think that's true. Uh, you know, we had a tra- yeah. we had a travel ban all the way back in January. You know, it's now March. If these other yeah. countries had done the same thing, uh, they wouldn't have the cases they've got spread all over the place. If they'd stopped uh, Chinese travel, but they didn't. Uh, let's see, uh, 10% of you said no, too little, too late. And uh, other answers, uh, just too bad they squandered the time uh, Trump uh, bought with closing off China. Yeah, so I guess That's we're talking a, about what that. What a stupid comment. Well, I think we're talking about the other countries, aren't they? Too no, bad they the squandered country. the time. He said t- squandered because Trump cutting off with China. He's, they're saying that squandered time. Just too bad they squandered the time Trump bought with closing of off China. Oh, I misunderstood you. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I apologize. So yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think he uh, uh, shut down China quickly, and uh, the other uh, European countries did not because they're politically correct, of course, and they don't want to be accused of anything like uh, racism or anything like that. But it was. They accused him of that. When he, well, when he yeah. cut off travel to China, they called him a racist and yeah. xenophobic and uh, the yeah. whole dang thing. Yeah. And just right. a note to the listeners, you can no longer call it the Chinese virus, so, so don't even <laughs> don't even go there. You can't do that. <laughs> or the Luan virus or any other uh, anything like that, you know, so. Uh, you can't embarrass anyone to make them feel bad. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is this Woe is, with me. This is not political. It's not politically correct, you know. So yeah. call it what it is, the COVID-19 or whatever it is. What it is. I don't know. Anyway, I, I know the farmers and ranchers are very concerned, uh, so we've got to tell them what's going on in news and agriculture. And <laughs> pray to God it's not a repeat. But we'll, well, if it is, I'll do, a, I'll do an update. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll be right back. Here's your news and ag. 25 minutes after the hour, it's Thursday, March 12, 2020, 28 degrees. We're looking for high of 39 degrees today. A little snow this morning. Uh, the uh, debt per taxpayer is 72,500. I'm sorry, debt per citizen, not taxpayer. Uh, debt per citizen, $72,539. The assets per citizen is... Uh, four hundred and fifty-two thousand seven nine hundred and seventy-nine, and um, Venezuela still at ninety-five, uh, <laughs> ninety ninety-five hundred and eighty-five uh, inflation rate. Yeah, yeah. Oil, uh, gas went down another nickel yesterday. So if you got a twenty-gallon tank, uh, wow, you saved a, a dollar. You can get, uh, uh, you know, those. Uh, Breadsticks with your pizza. So <laughs> natural gas drops at dollar ninety one, so that's yeah. 
it, you know, it's, it was showing some strength. But the crude yeah. market is probably has mm. as much to do as the grading the bear market as yeah. anything. And we talked about this six months ago, <clears throat> you know, that this was a black hole, that the, mm. they weren't anywhere near um, being able to to uh, make money at the, at the prices that uh, gas and, and even oil were selling at. And mm. <clears throat> then with the uh, downturn in the, in the global use of oil from 100 million barrels a day back to 90, 94, 95 million barrels a day, it's, it's a big change, big change. Yeah. Our downloads uh, of our show, 3,397, 3,397 downloads of our shows. And uh, uh, if you missed any of our shows, you can uh, easily find them on KMMSAM.com or on our app at AM1450 KMMS and uh, just hit podcast on the app and boom, you're there, man. You can listen to any show. Uh, They're commercial free and uncut. And, and, how, uh, and how many shows? We have 349 right now. So. I mean, we're not even a year. Not yet. So. You're still a baby in diapers. Uh, well, <laughs> well, we're not on 365 days. So, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, we've got a ways to, uh, ways to go yet. So, <laughs> all right. So, uh, let's see. Uh, what else is happening here? Um, uh, Weinstein, oh, yeah, Weinstein got twenty three years. Oh, uh, who cares? No I know. Cares. <laughs> well, he's, but, but, but he's, a lot uh, of people what, do. What, a lot of people care that he got twenty three. Well, what about years. Tom Hanks and his wife have coronavirus in Australia? Yeah, in the hospital. That's people true. care about that. Yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. Okay. I would I would say they care more about Weinstein than they do Tom Hanks, but anyway. no, you think so? Well, Tom Hanks hadn't raped anybody lately. Yeah, well, he, he wasn't a convicted <laughs> rapist until yesterday. Well, that's, well, he is now. <laughs> he got twenty three years. So. Yeah, but they're all they're they're all com- complicit in it. Everyone in Hollywood is complicit. Uh, okay, well, if you say Come so. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. well, this wait, wait, yeah. stop. Okay, I'm waiting. I'm stopping. He he he, he won more Oscars than anyone else. Seventy two. He had the largest management company in in hollywood yeah the largest production company in, in hollywood yeah the largest distributor for films in hollywood yes what? and and none of them knew that this ugly looking slob with all this power wasn't abusing women oh give me a break well they all knew but they didn't say anything see we all knew uh, them- we all knew jfk was bringing hookers in the back door but we didn't say anything <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but this is not the that's not even near the same thing. I know. Yeah. All right. We'll be back. Trust me. <laughs> Spite of your cards, letters, and phone calls, we will be back. All right. <laughs> Stay tuned. We got Montana State News, Fox News, Brooke Foster weather, and a lot of other inter- interesting stuff. Mike McCormick will join us at seven o'clock, and we'll talk about these markets after that. 24 minutes for the top of the hour. It's Thursday, March 12, 2020, 27 degrees outside. Mike McCormick will join us uh, in about a half an hour or so. Shane Tobin, half man, half amazing on the line. And Tommy Gallop, your morning mayor. This is the KMMS Morning Soapbox brought to you by the Club Tavern and Grill. They're voted uh, Bozeman's Choice Best Happy Hour. And uh, they have happy hour specials every day of the week. So, Stop in and see them there at the Best Western Grand Tree on North 7th across from Walmart. Tell them Tom and Shane sent you. It's where the locals go. And, um, well, in other news, uh, Shane, uh, NBA is going to postpone their season, the rest of the season. I, I, I was shocked when I saw that last night. You know, yeah. I was checking, checking out some stuff because of the speech uh, that was made by your president. Yeah. And all of a sudden, up comes this thing about the NBA. Yeah. And something about somebody was, was you know, found to be, have tested yeah. positive, and they were going on the court, so they yeah. called everyone off. And then, mm-hmm. then they made an announcement, they're canceling the season. Well, yeah. you know, last year we, we were talking about derivatives, and I told you, you know, it's the only mm-hmm. unregulated market, and that derivatives is how they fund these $100 million contracts with players. Yeah. And the derivatives could be the... The you know yeah. the, the 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 shooter drop of course turns mm-hmm. out to be a virus. Yeah. But can you imagine if this shuts down uh, football? Well, baseball would be more likely. 
Well, that's for now for the summer. But yeah. if this can, if this continues into the in to next year on the you know first of sure. October. Oh yeah. Well, if it if it continues that long, it's going to be a lot more serious than football. Well, they're saying it's here to stay now. That's what well, they're saying. Well, we'll see. I guess I don't know, but anyway. Um, anyway. So uh, let's see. Uh, boy, um, yeah, they postponed their season, uh, and um, we mentioned earlier Tom Hanks and his wife uh, got the virus in um, uh, Australia. They were shooting a shooting a movie there, so they're. Uh, uh, in a, hospitalized there, I guess, or quarantined, or whatever they whatever they do to you. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, I was talking to my daughter last night about it. She's a respiratory therapist, deals yeah. with people, lung issues and and breathing issues, and you know, she, it, mm-hmm. it, like she's looking at it from the standpoint of being a, a you know one of the people working in the hospital. She works in the emergency room mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, the operating room, and, and mm-hmm. it's just uh, the thought of having to wear a hazmat suit. The lighter ones, even yeah. but anyway, all day long. You mm-hmm. know, she said it's just people don't know how impractical that is, and not you know. Yeah, it's not easy to work on people when yeah. you've got all this stuff all over you. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, and they're 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 sort of a one size fits all too. I think. <laughs> well, not only that, they're not ventilated, so you yeah. sweat profusely. I, I would mean, think so. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, they can't be. Yeah, the, ventilating them would kind of <laughs> defeat the purpose, I guess, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, she she's just uh, it upsets her as a, a medical person because yeah. it's implied that it's airborne. Yeah, and th- they're denying that outright. So there you go. Two concerns I have: mm-hmm. is it airborne, and yeah. is it rep- re-replicating or replicating itself mm-hmm. in each host that it, it's in? Which, which these are problems that no one's even like talked about. Well, I don't know they're talking about it, but I'm sure they're considering them. Anybody who uh, you know is familiar with viruses at the level yeah. at the level they're doing this are very concerned about that both those things i think yeah but the vice president has a press conference every day and no one says to him well is it airborne you know is it replicating well, well you know, why why, 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 why would you why would you tell people that because that would be worldwide panic uh, nobody would go anywhere nobody would ever leave their home I mean, I, I think there's certain information. Well, of that... course they wouldn't. They'd die. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. <laughs> I mean, look, the Spanish flu killed yeah. five. You know, you know, they, it killed yeah. 100 million people. Yeah. And it, it infected 500 million people 100 years ago, and the the population of the world was two billion. Twenty seven percent of the world got infected by it. Yeah, and uh, we didn't have near so, the uh, medical expertise we have today that we had then. And you could talk about the Black Plague. You could go all the way back to whenever. You know, I'm only so. talking on the base of numbers. So yeah, but know, we don't it's, have it's, we don't have massive numbers yet. No, no, four thousand like, four thousand deaths worldwide is not massive it, numbers. I mean, no, but H one N one was, and yeah, you know, well, that's so, true, but. We we dealt with that. We dealt with swine flu. We dealt with bird flu. We de- dealt with H one N one. You know, I mean. Well, beat me up because I'm playing the devil's advocate. Go well, that's ahead. okay. No, I, 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 I no. I, 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 I to beat me up. I, I don't want to be right. I want to be wrong. But I'm just telling you, <laughs> you know, there's certain things you would want to be concerned about. If you and I have a discussion, that's good radio. Come on. I'm not, pick, I'm I'm not picking on you. It's not personal. Talk with you. It's not personal. <laughs> But I, I want to make it personal because, you know, I want what? you to get it before I do. <laughs> well, I'm older than you. If I get it, <laughs> you'll be doing this by yourself. Oh, and I'd be the host. <laughs> yeah, Yay! see? There you are. Now, yeah, now you got has, it. You see, everybody has an angle. Everybody right. has an angle. Shane, Shane is out to get me out of this job. Yeah, I'd absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. the bottom line. All right. We, I got to take a quick break here. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be right back right after this. 14 minutes before the uh, top of the hour. Shame and Tom and Half Man, Half Amazing on the line in Vancouver, British Columbia. Tom Eagle up your morning mayor in the house. And this is the KMMS Morning Soapbox with Tom and Shane, brought to you by the Club Tavern and Grill. They're in the Best Western Grand Tree on North 7th. Uh, stop in and tell them Tom and Shane sent you in. It's where the locals go. So uh, let's hope uh, the locals will stay. Keep going there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and will someone take a pickle jar down there and put Tom and Jane's jar on? Uh, yeah, kind of, that's it, yeah. Jane. So when you go in there, you throw a quarter in there. So when we come down, we don't have to pay for our drinks. That's right? true. Yeah, yeah. We, we want a drink jar, okay? That would a be good. Yeah, jar. yeah. It should be a Tom and Shane 
chip jar yeah, down just there. Just a quarter. Yeah. yeah, throw yeah, a quarter in. Yeah. yeah, just a little, you know, something or other, you know. Yeah, Nothing yeah. serious, you know. Right. <laughs> we don't need a lot. <laughs> no. Well, just a couple of drinks each and we'll be yeah. fine. I'm a... I'm a one drink wonder anyway. Well, there you are. From our chat line, app chat line, it's time to buy stock in toilet paper. It's flying off the shelf due to the coronavirus. Yeah, that's. Uh, I, 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 I guess you need 14 days of toilet paper, right, for everybody in the family, uh, for the quarantine part or whatever. So, so I guess you need, uh, what, a month supply or, or so? Yes. And. Uh, of course, you need uh, canned food. Uh, you need water in case uh, you need a uh, uh, one of those crank generators in case the power goes out, so you can activate your cell phone and whatever. <laughs> you know, you got to have all this. Got to have all this stuff. This is stuff. That's right. Got to. I got to have all this stuff. You know. So <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, it's pretty scary. Well. Um, you know, we. Uh, I, I wonder what we're going to do with these. Uh, you know, the women's basketball playoffs are coming up. And speaking of that, uh, we get uh, people who complain that KMMS interrupts programs to uh, t- uh, carry basketball here. Right. You know, men's and women's. And uh, we get paid for that, folks. MSU pays us to carry the game. So that's why the bean counters are not going to turn down money, you know, so. That's the reason why your shows are interrupted and basketball comes on. So right. um, I think uh, I, I don't know that the men made any playoffs, maybe, but uh, I know the women did. So there may be a few more games, but, you know, most of them will be at night, I think. So there you not, go. That, not that that helps people who listen all day long, but unfortunately, that's the story. So. Okay, real quick, because I want to bring this up because we got to yeah. keep people aware and make comparisons. Mm-hmm. Shingles is an old, is a is an issue that people have because of chickenpox, and one out of three people in the United States will develop shingles in their lifetime. This worries me. I don't know about you, but yeah. it worries. No, me. it does. It worries me. It, yeah. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's a, a disease of older people, mostly over sixty-five. So one out of three. That's. 34 percent mm-hmm. and uh it's a herpes type okay so it's a herpes type virus mm-hmm. okay so it's there's no there's no cure for it there's no you know they, they're, they're coming to trying to come up with a with a, a vaccine for it but most three of the four companies that have come up have class action suits against them yeah. for creating it <laughs> and the people that took it um so t- t- 10 to 18 percent will experience an extreme uh uh, event and uh, mm-hmm. one to four percent of the people who get shingles are hospitalized for complications and shingles can can, can cause uh, around a hundred a hundred deaths annually oh yeah to elderly people mm-hmm. and so when I'm only bringing up because of the, the hundred deaths annually yeah in relationship to the tens of thousands of people that get it so you know, mm-hmm. a, another case of a virus that can be systematic and dangerous to you so yeah. there we go all right we've got a caller waiting on the line she and i gotta take a quick break if you could chat with them i'll be right back right after this five minutes before the top of the hour we've got a caller patiently waiting on the line let's go to the phones 522 talk is the number call you on the morning soapbox with tom and shane what is up hey this is john john how you doing Good. I'm doing great because I am in control of the National Light Bulb Reserve. Ooh. And I have a closet full of GE Reveal bulbs, not the LED bulbs, but the real incandescent bulbs. Yeah, I do too. I bought those when they outlawed them or <laughs> outlawed the manufacture of them anyway. So I've got, well, a, I got a stockpile myself. This morning at the <laughs> open, my light bulbs are worth $100 a bulb. Wow. <laughs> But that's, so, that's only the opening price. They're better what, than a baseball card, huh? Yeah, like what, what currency? It, U.S. dollars limit one. Yeah. So I told you, know, him, <laughs> he's not going to sell more than one time. So if it's hundred bucks a bowl, yeah, yeah, the bubble wrap it for a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not chipping. It's cash and carry. Yeah. I'll, I'll be set up in my bank lobby. All right. <laughs> now, now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> that way, I figure I get a, a free armed guard with the. Deal. That's right. Yeah. That's, 
Yeah, that's good. But, <laughs> but that's only the opening price. Oh, good. Price okay. will be determined by the marketplace. That's right. Yeah. As as the morning progresses, and yeah. and tomorrow during capitulation, yeah. uh, it's uh, every man for himself on my light bulb. All right. <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really glad that when I open that closet, yeah. it's solid light bulb. You know, Town Square is going to send you a bill for this ad. <laughs> no, is it a public service announcement? I told him I deemed it a public service announcement. Just remember, if it wasn't for your plumber, you'd have nowhere to go. That's right. <laughs> sure, absolutely correct. And when you need a light bulb, you'll know where to get one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks for the info. This is okay. you, you don't get this on other stations, you know. I mean. <laughs> Not at this time in the morning. You're only going to get that info here. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks for the call, man. Appreciate bye. it. Thanks bye for now. listening. Take care. All right. Good call. Well, it's, like, yeah. it's like getting info out of you. I can't get any info out of you about yeah. school or college. <laughs> oh. You know, so there's no X factor, right? Like, you no. know, I, I have to rely on a virus. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> what What do you want from me about school or high, I, I, high school I, or college? Know, there has to be a good story there somewhere. Oh, you there's, there's lots of there's lots of good stories there. <laughs> you, I mean, you were an athlete. That's like, right. Yeah. You you are you are on the right side of the game in college. God, yes, I was. Yes, you I know, was. Being an athlete in college is a huge. <laughs> yeah. Um, from our text line four seven eight eight two nine eight, talking about getting the uh, uh, run on toilet paper and all the other things that are yes, out of the store, yes. the Lysol wipes and Clorox and all everything else, bleach and. Everything else that's missing from the store shelves. Uh, everybody's getting prepped in case Bernie wins. Because <laughs> 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 you won't have those things probably if Bernie wins. No. Uh, regarding uh, the basketball, the Bobcats men's tournament is in Boise this weekend. And the ladies play as well. Not sure where they are. So uh, that's our... That's now our, there, you you know there's rumor that March Madness is going to be done without without the crowds, right? Yeah, and that's that's sad that's bad. because that's uh, bad. boy, uh, these players really play off the crowd. They really do, and hundred oh, percent, it's just like a practice. Oh yeah, and yeah, NBA that's what I'm saying, play, yeah. and NBA players are saying it. You know, if they're yeah. going to ban people, they're not going to go out with it without fans and play. So no, you know what. No wonder they they ended the season if the players were saying, "Well, I'm not going out there without fans." You know. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Well, the NBA probably has to cancel theirs because uh, you know they've uh, there there's a big price to putting on an NBA game bigger than you know high school or college or things like that. So but it's also the liability. Well, yeah, that's the other the, thing yeah. as well. Can you yeah. Imagine people suing the NBA because they. I got the the virus because I was, you know, at a game. At, at the game. My wife said uh, you should uh, have everybody sign a release that you're there at your own risk, you know. Of but, course. But, <laughs> of course, if you get it and then you spread it all over your family and everybody else, then I guess <laughs> that's not a good thing. So. That's not a good thing. <laughs> yeah. No, right. let's not do that. Okay. So, all right, we've got to uh, we got to dug out of here. We got the top of the hour. Mike McCormick's going to join us here shortly, so uh, we'll be talking to him, and and uh, of course uh, uh, we'll be right back right after this. So stay tuned. Welcome to Preserving Your Wealth with Mike McCormick, where we talk about smart ways to invest and preserve your money. Mike is a registered investment advisor with McCormick Financial Advisors in Bozeman, Montana. As an independent fiduciary, Mike does not receive commissions from any of the products or investments mentioned on this program. Consult a professional before making any investment decision. You can find old shows archived at McCormickFinancialAdvisors.com. Learn, participate, interact. And hey, Mike McCormick's in the house. How you doing? Um, I, I think I'm okay, but I don't know. I don't know either. Shane doesn't know if you're okay either. <laughs> I'm sit I'm sitting down. Yeah, he's sitting down. He's 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 well, calm. Mikey, we're <laughs> officially technically in a bull market, a bear market now, because down twenty five percent in a month. Oh yeah, and and I would say that we're we're pretty certain to be going into uh, a recession. The R word, yeah. Ooh. Uh, it, it, well, two well, consecutive well, no growth quarters. So in that's other words. right. Yeah. Two consecutive negative uh, growth quarters. So certainly this one will. Will, will produce um, it, 
the news is is that the bad news is is as bad as you can imagine. We are in the zombie apocalypse, as, yeah. I, as yeah. I like to say. This is it. We're here. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we're maximum fear, but we're <laughs> we're in the panic mode. It's the black swan of all black swan events. It truly is, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Nobody saw this coming. It truly is. Yeah. Uh, and then, but the good, here's the good news is that we will recover. It, it's a, it's sort of a weird thing that it, it, mm-hmm. it couldn't be really much scarier right now. Yeah. And yet at the same time, if everybody was, you know, able to not pay attention to their statements and able to handle this without getting too emotional, um, we could see, yeah, you know, the sun will come out tomorrow. <laughs> I will not sing for you. <laughs> okay. But the sun will come Annie. out tomorrow. Because this will pass. <laughs> yeah. And we will be left with us, you know, some hangover. There'll be a hangover from this uh, in terms of economics. Oh. And that that's what could lead to um, to a true recession. So, of course, I can't say that we're going to have a recession. But uh, yeah. it seems likely that stopping the gears of, mm-hmm. of capitalism right now is, is what's likely to happen. And getting that machine going again will will not be a profitable endeavor it it will be painful and so you know what do i what's going on with the financial news world what's the news flow we're just as confused as anybody out there Mm -hmm. Uh, to to say what's going to happen with stocks is to say we are in a fear moment right now we we are certainly going to overshoot on valuations to the downside because of the unknown Uh, that's the nature of it. it we cannot know what's going to happen, and therefore mm-hmm. people will be safe and, and overly conservative and overly fearful. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so the, co- the key is is to not be like that and to recognize that in a matter of perhaps months, perhaps quarters, uh, there will be profitability again, there will be economic activity again, and there will be portfolio recovery again. Yeah. And so this comes into your... You know, as I as as I keep saying, this is your zombie apocalypse. What is in your emergency stash? How mm-hmm. prepared are you for such a shock? Do you have cash available? Do you have, uh, you know, your Susie Orman money? Um, is your debt been paid down so it's manageable? Uh, what, you know, what things can you make adjustments to in your business and your lifestyle that will sustain your income uh, and keep your spirits high? And and so. No, I, I hope I'm not being alarmist to people, but waking up and hearing mm-hmm. that the NBA is canceled, you know, it's like, okay, so this is how everything's going to go. We're going to cancel everything. Yeah. Uh, my suspicion, we're about, we're supposed to leave on spring break today. Yeah, I got yeah. some, I got some decisioning to do. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of people that are leaving yeah. on spring break today. Hawaii seems to be particularly popular this year with yeah. our, with our demographic. <laughs> um, my suspicion is that when we get back, we'll find out that our schools are closed for two weeks, which because is the residence of, time of, of the, the yeah the quarantine in place if you left the campus. Right. Huh? So welcome yeah. back home from wherever you came. <laughs> yeah. We're all just going to keep, we want you to stay at home for two weeks. We're happy to have you. Uh, from our text line, uh, 478-8298, do you feel the uh, markets are uh, scared uh, based on government information? Oh, I think that. Do you think the do do people have the confidence the government's on top of this or not? Oh, or, of course not. Yeah. Uh, no, and, mar- and, and I'm not going to cause you know this is not yeah. a political one side or the other side. Yeah, it isn't. Yeah. This is one of those things where no matter who's in charge, you're not you don't have confidence in. That's it. true. There's there's no confidence in anything. <laughs> yeah. That's what this fear cycle is. Yeah. James. Well, uh, in the trading market, market is trying to project the future and where where you're at. Well, now we've gone to a bear market, which means they have no idea. So they don't, they don't know what the economic implications are, but they're far worse than in, in just a managed way. So there's, there's no managed value to the market. The intrinsic value of the market is totally undetermined now. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, you can take things that are from a fiat currency to a commodity to a, you know, it's only worth what somebody mm-hmm. else pays you for it. We do have real earnings that are happening. I, I imagine Procter and Gamble with their high demand for toilet paper and other products mm-hmm. uh, is, yeah. is probably seeing some, some good numbers. It's hard um, to squeeze the charm in uh, right. Walmart and Costco now. And, and it's simple to <laughs> imagine how Amazon and Netflix are going to benefit. But what we're seeing in the markets is we're seeing wholesale selling to cash. 
we didn't even see bonds go up yesterday, which was a down 6% day. Yeah. Uh, we're going to see the market open up and trigger all the circuit breakers and have a pause this morning. This is, this is fear time. And, and one thing that there's two things, I guess, that I want people to really take comfort in. One is past two years have been so darn good that mm -hmm. really I was looking at portfolios yesterday and having a hard time finding one that was down for 12 months. People were still positive for 12 months. Yeah, the stock market doesn't normally do that. I mean, it, it, mm -hmm. we're down a lot, yes, from the highs. We are in, technically in bear market because we're down over 20%. But we were 10 to 15% overvalued by some people's metrics before this all happened. So, you know, take heart that you're only after today is over. You know, at most, I think people will be back two years in valuations of their portfolios. And that's terrible. That's bad. And I'm not yeah. demeaning it. But two years ago, you know, we're, we were here talking about how things are kind of expensive. Boy, the economy sure is good. Everybody's been making money in their portfolios. So if we get back to that, you know, then we're still mm -hmm. solvent. Still yeah. We're still, you know, net positive. We're still owning good companies. But we're mm -hmm. seeing right now that people are selling everything from Bitcoin to gold to stocks into cash. Uh, and that's that's where this, you know, yeah, we were talking the other day, uh, uh, Shane and I were speculating about why uh, gold isn't moving more than it is because of, you know, that's where a lot of people go to protect against inflation or whatever. Something you know, something but. about this new economy, and, and I hate to be the one that saying things are new, but whether it's exchange-traded funds correlating all stocks together, which I'm a believer in, mm -hmm. whether it's the ability that people from their computers now don't, they don't need to call somebody to, you know, you don't need to get your broker on the phone to make a trade necessarily. You don't need to take your gold to somewhere. You can do it all from a click, 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 click. Mm -hmm. And so people can express their emotions today. Uh, and then the other thing to take heart in beside the fact that things were already pretty well overvalued and we were, you know, beyond fair value for a while mm -hmm. is that, like I said, things will get, this will pass. This will not be the end of humanity and capitalism. This will be mm -hmm. a pause. Yeah. A pause and maybe, you know, read a good book. Maybe yeah. we'll get better. <laughs> Find a new yeah. skill. Um, look yeah. into distance learning. There's going to be lots of opportunities. That's right. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> don't sell today. Uh, recognize that this is why you were. Yeah, you're count. in there. You're in there for the long run. Not throw your statement away sure. for March. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a, mm -hmm. you know, it's a mulligan. Uh, might be yeah. the, uh, the hope to think about it like that. Uh, the news is real. Uh, the mm -hmm. challenges are real. Uh, there are people that I know, clients that I know, that are in businesses that are being drastically impacted. Uh, I got a client that's it's heavy into the trade show business. They make the you know six-figure display booths for right. the biggest companies in the world. Their business is uh, you know okay, half the earnings for the year basically gone. Yeah, that's Not that's how those nobody's guys. having. Well, a convention has kind of gone downhill anyway. A lot of people are doing them online, and oh, that's you know, true. Unless you've got, unless you've got like the you know consumer uh, uh, products thing in Vegas every year, or the car, they just canceled the car shows. I think. Um, Tom, I'm surprised at how much people do these conferences. Actually, yeah, I, I hear what you're yeah. saying that that technology's done away with some of it, but it still is mm -hmm. a huge, huge part of companies' budgets is mm -hmm. flying these people around to go meet with each other all oh, the it time. Is. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we're going to be going online with computers yeah. more and more. Are you, are you, are, 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 uh, investors looking more toward, um, uh, exchange traded funds or index funds in, um, medical, uh, products, services, uh, has there been an increase in investing? Uh, not on a sector, not on a sector basis. No, I would say that, that it's a, Similarly, across the board, this is a more... Healthcare has always been pretty good for the most part, hasn't it? Well, in terms of opportunities yeah. to, to buy things that will recover first. You know, this is where, okay, Warren Buffett says, be greedy when others are fearful. Mm -hmm. Here's yeah. your time. Here's yeah. your time, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who's going to walk in here right now? Yeah. Who's I'm buy? a fiduciary for yeah. my clients. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm inherently conservative uh, in terms of risking my client's money the biggest thing that i want to do is protect it so for me yeah. to say here we go charging in like custer into the battlefield this yeah. is going to be this is going to be for god for glory and here we go um <laughs> i'm not going to be the first one into this yeah 
But if you are, if you're listening and you you recognize that we are in a fear cycle and this is when your the good deals happen, uh, look into the things that will recover and mm-hmm. and certainly healthcare is is first and foremost. Yeah. Uh, we're going to want to fund them. Mm-hmm. Think about how and the government and gamble your home stuff. Right. People when the government gonna, does yeah. does come up with a plan to help us, uh, the Fed's already been pumping liquidity into various situations. The, there were some mm-hmm. there were some dislocations in the bond market that have been happening, and the Fed's been stepping in. Uh, and providing liquidity, but there's going to be some stimulus, uh, and it's really fascinating to me because as we debate on this show, uh, you know, the conservative view is to cut taxes and allow consumers to decide how to spend their own money. The liberal view is to tax that money and have the government reallocate the capital. Uh, this is this is a time when studies, <laughs> again, who mm-hmm. studies? I don't know. Studies show yeah. that giving handouts stimulus from the government to the people, from the tax money they've already collected, mm-hmm. is what's appropriate. Yeah. And we see that Trump's reluctant to do that. He's talking about a payroll tax cut, which will be beneficial, but really it'll be beneficial a quarter from now. It won't. It's not the same as somebody, you know, ding dong, instead of Amazon, it's a $1,000 bill sitting on your front porch. You right, know, yeah. That's the sort of stimulus <laughs> that we're talking about. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so to answer your question, Tom, if you're going into the into the market, I do really promote the exchange traded funds because you don't know if Johnson and Johnson or Stryker or Bristol Myers or Novartis or whoever is going to benefit mm-hmm. from from the upswing. Who's going to get the cure? Who's yeah. going to get the federal government's uh, uh, thumbprint on you're the one that's going to get the most money? You don't know these things. An exchange traded fund, IYH, is one of them for the healthcare. It's a great mm-hmm. way to say you know something in healthcare is going to benefit from this. Yeah. Um, there's a communi- communication services category that you can get into that can benefit uh, everything from Facebook to whatever. So yeah. do your homework. <laughs> it's okay to be brave when others are fearful, but not both feet, maybe a couple toes. Yeah. Uh, for the benefit of the listeners, exchange traded fund is just a basket of stocks that are traded like a stock, like a single stock. So it's just today's for- version of a, of a mutual fund. Yeah. So their be- benefit. All right. We got to take a short break. Mike McCormick, uh, McCormick Financial Advisors, is in the house. Shane Matobin, half man, half amazing on the line. And uh, Tommy, go up your morning, Mayor. We'll be right back. We're brought to you by the Club Tavern and Grill. And uh, I should mention, they're voted uh, Bozeman's Choice Best Happy Hour. Club Tavern and Grill offers happy hour specials every day of the week as one of Bozeman's most popular happy hour spots and sports bars. You'll be sure and find something you'll love from their extensive drink and food menu. They also serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and they have a kid-friendly menu also. So to place an order for pickup or make a reservation for parties of six or more, go online to the Club Tavern and Grill, theclubtavernandgrill.com, and check them out during the Best Western Grand Tree. On North 7th, across from Walmart, it's where the locals go and tell them Tom and Shane and Mike sent you in. Mm-hmm. And we'll be right back right after this. Shane and Tom and Half Man, Half Amazing's on the line. Tom Eagle off your Marty Mayor's in the house. And uh, the incredible everybody who wants to be like Mike McCormick oh, I appreciate that. I appreciate is in the that. house. And uh, Mike, uh, Mike needs some advice. Uh, Mike is going to San Francisco and then to San Diego for spring break with F- the 50 family. 50-minute layover connection in San Francisco. With the family. And uh, I want to know from the listeners out there, should Mike make this trip? Is it safe? What do you think, Shane? Should he go to should my, he go my to plan San is Diego? to come back also, just to <laughs> yeah. be clear. I'm not yeah. just going one way. <laughs> Should he, should he travel to to uh, uh, coronavirus ravaged California? No. <laughs> no nor, nor should he be going to Hawaii. My my sister's in Hawaii, and I'm worried for her. So yeah. it, it's not Hawaii I'm worried about. It's all the other people that are coming there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't know where the people are at a resort of five thousand people, where they're from, or you know what they're backgrounds and stuff is you don't normally pay attention to any of it because you're there with the kids now you have to yeah sure sure yeah. and so you know tom i i'm not disagreeing i i certainly agree it's postponing this trip uh the airlines will let me move it uh mm-hmm. i believe without a change oh, they fee. Will, yeah um the vrbo that i got is uh mm-hmm. i'll probably eat some of that um, yeah. cause there's a private owner on there that, you know, there's another, it's not a corporation I'm getting my money back from. It's an individual person. Uh, the car rental, I did hot wire and I prepaid. 
So I'll probably eat a bunch of that too. So it's, you know, it's probably a thousand dollar loss, if not a, a two thousand dollar loss on it. But I could be saving the health of my father, who's elderly, that we're gonna go visit. Yeah. Could be saving his life. Uh and so this falls into the realm of the low probability, yeah. high consequence decision making. And you should get a good airfare. In the future. You should about. get one now, <laughs> I would think. For rescheduling you. No, yeah. no, I've checked. <laughs> Yeah. There's not, no, there's no deal. Yeah, I, I looked the other day too, Tom. It's, it's not great. I did hear that you can get from, ironically, from Seattle to Hawaii for ninety nine dollars. Yeah. Maybe Seattle's <laughs> looking to get rid of their people. I think they are. I think. <laughs> like, they, I think it was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why, why should Seattle have all the fun with this virus? Let's but in this, spread it over to Hawaii right, for a while. In this fun little, you know, group decision making yeah. we have is we have mm -hmm. the whole sentiment encompassed. Is that there's fear and uncertainty in this. We don't. The, the high consequence here. I could be endangering my family. I could be endangering my community. Yeah. I probably not. We're all very healthy. Everybody mm -hmm. we spend time with is very healthy. We all get the flu from time to time and we all recover. And it's like, oh, that was sort of a bummer. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're okay. And that's part of life. Yeah. Well, you can't come in here till at least a month after you get back. Well, I already, you're right. Right. I mean, when we get back, we're right. Right. I can phone it in, though. I mean, I'm hey, not... Mike, why don't you come in every day for a week when you get back? Yeah, help, right. me yeah, yeah. help me out. Yeah. Help me out. Yeah. Shane wants to take over the show. Yeah. And I'll be, yeah. Well, I'm hospitalized uh, with the. Uh, uh, up to my ears and respirators. Oh, nobody wants you out of here, Tom. You're irreplaceable. <laughs> nobody knows how to run that run that 1920s board that you run know, there anyway. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a secret that uh, nobody knows. Yeah, let's take a phone call. Five two two talk is the number. Call you on the air with Mike McCormick, uh, Tom and Shane. What's up? Hi, this is Denise. I just went to North Carolina and I wore a mask the whole time I was in the airport and on the air flying airplane and stuff, and I. I feel healthy and everything like that. I didn't see a lot of people in the airport with masks on, but, you know, if you wear a mask around somebody, especially the elderly and stuff, you shouldn't be able to wash your hands. You should be able to visit safely. I like that. Oh, yeah. I, I well, like I pro that. You're probably the most sa safest place to breathe air on the planet is on an airplane at 50,000 feet. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, the entire... The entire the vacuum in an airplane is is recycled every four minutes through the engine. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> heated you know, and you just uh, kind of sanitized. A lot of people yeah. and stuff, and you know, mm -hmm. if you're going to eat there, stay off in a car corner by yourselves, and yeah. you know, try to get a restaurant or eat outdoors. Mm -hmm. You know, then you, the only thing I think you have to worry about in San Francisco is all the homeless people and stuff, and they do put the fires out. Apparently, that where to go, and where not to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think I'll be within terminal whatever and, and go from you know, so you'll be with, yeah, you're just one to the other. In San right? Francisco. Yeah, yeah Mike, yeah. Mike, you'll be behind glass. He, he's like that orchid. Yeah. The Aquarius. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I, I'd hate to see you, you know, not go and lose money and stuff, not be able yeah. to visit your father and just yeah, wear a mask around him and stuff. I appreciate that. So, Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, bye bye. Yeah, it's, it's a fun, that's a fun thing to do when you, when you go to an international airport and there's all this glasses. You know, go up to the, to the glass where there's a bunch of kids, you know, and yeah. knock on it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, poke, the, poke at them through the glass. And that, you know, yeah. like they're you're yeah. looking at monkeys or you're looking it's at... It's funny, we are planning to go to the zoo also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you said like being in the zoo, right? I didn't well, want to say well, that. But, well, know. they let you take scuba tanks on the plane, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll see about that. Brave new world, everybody. <laughs> Keep your hands off the keyboard today. <laughs> That's right. Mike McCormick, uh, McCormick Financial Advisors, how they get a hold of you? 522-3201. No login or mask needed. All right. We'll be back with Tom and Shane and Mike right after these important words. 24 minutes for the top of the hour. It's Thursday, March 12th, 2020. 28 degrees outside. Mike McCormick in the house. And uh, Shane Matobin, half man, half amazing. And Ken Loops and... The chair recognizes the Honorable Shane Mentalman. He has the so, floor. Uh, thanks, thanks, Doc, for the last 10 years probably have, had, let this, had led the bull market. I just want to go over them real quick. Uh, Facebook today is 172.64, up 3%. <coughs> Not high volume, <coughs> 7.4 million. Um, there, the average uh, uh, or high volume or the, the high volume for the year is 492 million and low volume of 18 million. 
<coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Amazon is uh, one thousand or eighteen hundred and twenty dollars, down seven hundred and ninety six. And uh, let's see, we've got uh, Netflix and three forty nine ninety two, down fourteen twenty one. Again, not a lot, a lot of volume. And uh, of course, uh, Google um, twelve fifteen, and it's down sixty four. And I always throw Disney in there. It's one oh five. So it, <clears throat> interesting thing. I'm sure my, Michael want to comment about this too. Is even these stocks that have basically led the the bull market in the last ten years, they're they're off, but not like significantly. And right, I mean, so there is some differentiation that's happening. We we got a great question. Uh, from a listener that I'll just paraphrase it basically mm -hmm. says, okay, if this is a good time to buy, which mm -hmm. companies are going to do the best on the rebound? Mm -hmm. And so Shane, your point is, is taken in that, you know, the first realm of investigation that you would do is say, okay, well, who's followed the most? Mm -hmm. Because if you go with the idea that right now, everybody's just wholesale pressing the sell button on everything, which we're seeing, you know, when you see gold down, uh, when you see these safe havens, Bitcoin is also uh, remarkably down. It's not, it's not done anything like people thought it would. Um, then you say, okay, well, it's a simple game to simply say, which has fallen the farthest because when it comes back, it should come back the farthest also. And Shane, what you're saying is that there's certain companies in there that have, you know, when people have decided that they need to sell things, they've been the last ones to be sold. They've been sold less than the other things because of exactly. the perceived value, because they're going to, they they are like mm, you know Facebook. They're gonna ride it out better. Than right. If we're quarantined will. for two weeks, imagine how much we're gonna be on Facebook. Uh, you know, especially with the election now, looking at the news and all this stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, well, and you're gonna see more people ordering online than going out to the grocery store. You're gonna see all sorts of strange behavior, uh, and mm -hmm. in, 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 it'll again it'll be okay. The doors will open. Spring will come, and and we'll survive. Uh, but this experiment that we're going into, I think, you know, first it's going to get worse in terms of, uh, I expect us to cancel everything. I, I'm, I'm surprised that um, I asked Tom what he, he would do if he was Trump, and you said, I think it was good that he canceled flights to Europe. I said, well, you know, I think we're hours away from international flights maybe being canceled. I mean, if, if you're going to do one thing a little no. bit, this is the time to say, ah, what's, we're just going to do it all. Everything's, yeah. everything's shut down. If we're going to address it mm -hmm. half-assed, excuse me, bleep that out, sure. you know, then you're then you run the risk of looking bad. Mm -hmm. You run the risk of making a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Europe is the is the big point because uh, these companies went so lax in not doing anything. Right, and now it's you know, you know now people so you don't know where it is. Yeah, this is the hysteria. That's true. You don't know who's got it. Let's take a phone call. Five two two talk is the number. Caller, you are on the air with Mike McCormick and uh, Tom and Shane. What's up? Hi, Tom. This is Donna. Hi, Donna. How you doing? Good. <laughs> uh, two things. Um, travel. My concern wouldn't be the virus itself, but getting stuck quarantined somewhere away mm -hmm. from home. Mm -hmm. And uh, the stock market. Um, don't like to sound like a conspiracy theorist, uh, but. Uh, can the market be manip manipulated uh, so as to cause chaos for President Trump? Uh, there have been people like Bill Maher who are on record saying that they're willing for the economy to suffer mm -hmm. if uh, if we could, they can take President Trump out with mm -hmm. it. So, so that's my question. I'll let you talk about it. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks for the call. Yeah, great point. And of course, yeah, my wife and I said, well, what do we do if we get stuck in San Diego when we can't fly back? She said, well, we rent a car. Well, that's not going to save us any money, but, you know, okay. <laughs> yeah, you'll just maybe, drive maybe, back, huh? Maybe we'll buy a Yugo and then <laughs> sell it here or something that probably costs less. <laughs> Call Uber. <laughs> get you up here. <laughs> uh, and and to, the, to the idea that some people want the market to tank, um, sure, sure. I, I did my – dude, I, I don't – when I listen to news, I listen to financial news. My job is to be – Right, Finance. Yeah. My job is not to be political, Yeah. Uh, but I couldn't help myself for the past few nights to turn on cable news. Mm -hmm. And it's just alarming. It's not alarming. It's, it's comical to watch people say, don't panic. Yeah. And then they launch <laughs> right into this spiel yeah. that at the end of it, you're like shaking. You're like, oh, my God, <laughs> my dog's going to die of this or something. So, yes, uh, if you watch yeah. any commentator on uh, any side that's not pro-Trump, they're going to say Trump hasn't reacted properly to this, 
yeah. this is worse than he thinks, and we all need to be very concerned. There you and go. that's an easy one for them to play. All right. We got to take another break. Uh, Shane, we got a caller on the line. If you'll chat with them, we'll be right back. 14 minutes for the top of the hour. Mike McCormick in the house. Shane Tobin, half man, half amazing on the line. And uh, caller, you are on the air. What's up? Well, this is Clinton. I got a little advice for Mike and everybody else. Out All there. right. And you too, Tom. All right. You ready for this? Are I, you guys? I, I need it. How about you, Mike? Um, yeah, let me put my PPE on. Uh, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> Okay, well, I, what I think you should do. How old's your dad? 80, 80, wonderful. 80? Yep. Yeah, I'm a little older than him. I would advise you, is he in good health? Yeah. Uh, he says he's actually got the flu right now is what he said. <laughs> he said he has the flu? He's got a cold is what he calls it. Oh, uh, okay. But they hit him pretty hard these days, so. Well, if he's in good health other than maybe having a cold, yeah. I would advise you to go see your dad. Yeah, yeah. And, uh. And you don't want to be afraid of death. You know, death is at everybody's door. And Isn't nobody that the knows truth, when it's right? Happen. Isn't that the truth? Yeah, it's at everybody's door, and nobody knows when it's going to happen. So what I would say to you is enjoy your life. Go see your dad. And your, Is your mom alive? Oh, yeah. Both of them? Yep. And well, go see them and put your arms around and hug them and tell them you love them. That's the main thing. All right. You know, and I got something to say about this. Shane and I were talking. And I remember the Depression. A lot of people don't, but I do. And I'll tell you a little bit of story here about my great-grandparents. They were very, very wealthy people. They uh, had had uh, the, they had shorthorn cattle. They came up. Uh, they went to uh, ne Winnemucca, Nevada, with the Peter V. Jackson the first which was everybody knows in the Madison County. And they brought home a bunch of cattle. And uh, my great-grandparents -great brought home 420 head of shorthorn cattle. And they brought them to the ranch there on the Madison, which uh, Doug Smith and, uh, and his brother own now. And anyway, the winter of 1918 and 19 pretty much wiped them out. They, they went at the end of the winter with uh, 420 head of mother cows, and they came out with 200. And it uh, the, the cattle froze to death standing in the corner. I, I mentioned, when we were talking about it, I mentioned the, the great one here. The yeah. Charlie Russell, the famous artist, a postcard to the people whose rad was yeah. uh, staying at. And it was a postcard of a single cow at the bottom it said the last of the 20,000 yeah mm -hmm. it's that's the truth too Shane you know and the thing is is them days now we didn't have any money most of the people didn't have money and the people like my great-grandparents at that time had money is there a point somewhere here but the point is this if you're going to get out of the markets turn your money into gold and silver and the reason I say that is gold and silver over the last uh, eight or ten years has done nothing but multiply. I bought some of it, some silver at $2.50, and I bought gold at less than 1000 And so what I'm saying is it, it's the standard measure of the world, gold and silver is. And if you're going to bail out of the markets, turn it into that. That's all i got to say. All right. Hey, thanks for the call. Bet all you right. bye. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm not sure gold and silver is the place to do. It hasn't it hasn't worked so far, but it might. You know, if you are if you're if you're really scared about this, you, know, you got to do something, right? That's human yeah. nature. You got to do something. Well, um, Shane Shane said a lot of people are going to cash, and that's what most people are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I guess you could call gold and silver cash, but I don't I don't know. You, right. So Semantics. If it, if it if it gets worse. If this does turn into a breakdown of society, uh, then we're going to the beans and bullets part of the program. Yeah, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't want anybody to do that. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I think we're a long way away from that happening. I think that uh, even at the highest death rates of what we're looking at, this is not a big deal. And hearing from people on mm -hmm. in our community about how I should go and be with my family is really heartwarming. Uh, yeah. So I'll do some research and and uh, report back on that. Um, protecting yourself should have been done 
in the past three years of listening to this show where we were saying it's a, these are the salad days. Yep. You're making extra money. Hopefully it's the time to start saving. Yes. Your retirement accounts. I've always said, put it in the stock market. Mm -hmm. I still say, make that retirement contribution. If you planned on making a contribution, most of my clients have passed over some money for what they were planning on doing this year. I'm not spending it yet. Yeah. Uh, and they mostly have plenty of cash resources uh, or dividend income that can sustain them through these times. And that's the part of the plan. If you've been out, you know, you know spending every dollar that came your way uh, and borrowing and financing cars at hard at higher interest rates and things like that, you, you're exposed. Mm -hmm. uh, but it also means, you know, now is maybe it's even more important to not make uh, rash financial decisions. So find somebody you trust. Um, there's nothing that needs to be done now. Uh, no good financial decisions were made hastily. Yeah. Uh, so think about. I think that's a real message. You you need to really. All these things come along, and there's tons of hype, from the political side, yep. the market side. Yep. Everybody's got an opinion, but sit back and really think about. Be deliberate. What affects you. And as we talked about, you know, do your research. What has come down the slowest or. And here's where, here's where I come to is what do you wish, you know, we don't have to go back to the great reset no. to, to the great depression. We just have no. to go back to the great recession. Yeah. 2008, 2009. What mm -hmm. do you wish you would have done? Yeah. Okay. I wish I would have sold everything at the top mm -hmm. and kept it as cash yeah. and bought it at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. You got that out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Borrowing absolute clairvoyancy. What do you wish? Mm -hmm. You would have done yeah. and the answer is nothing yeah that is what you wish you would have done was yeah. nothing mm -hmm. some people sold mm -hmm. at the bottom yeah and they didn't get back in and they kept saying no, i don't trust yeah. it i don't trust it this isn't real this isn't real i don't trust it it's propped up it's not the real deal and they've been yeah. saying that for a decade and today they feel like they're right tomorrow they'll go back into you know potentially 10 years of being wrong yeah. again yeah so think about what you wish you would have done during the Great Recession. Do that. Be careful. Talk to people you trust that are not motivated by commissions. Uh, these would be the fiduciaries in your life, your CPA, your attorney, hopefully your financial advisors, your fiduciary. They're good people in town. I want you to give them a call. Enjoy your day. Okay. We got to take a quick break. We'll be right back right after this. Stay tuned. Two minutes before the top of the hour, we got a caller waiting on the line. Caller, you are on the air. What's going on? Uh, I feel like I'm always on the air. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask Mr. McCormick, um, and I was discussing this with Shane. Don't you think that the market to begin with was a bit overvalued due to the fact that the government pumped some money, a lot of money, into it back in 08? The, the, certainly the stock market was overvalued, and, and I do think that uh, the Fed – made it um worse. more yeah i mean they made it worse but it was a time of and, and and i think we'll get back there where the economy is really strong and so if people have extra money there was it wasn't like the stock market was overvalued and other things were not uh everything was overvalued uh, okay all right that makes, that makes a lot of sense i did not hear the president's um the speech last night but there was um talk about the fact that he was going to uh, bring about financial aid to, to uh, airlines, cruise ship, uh, travel, this and that. Mm -hmm. and, and is that still on the table, or ha has he uh, pulled back on that? Well, he said he was going to do that. He also said he was going to make sure people didn't miss paychecks and that insurance companies would cover uh, coronavirus, uh, um, you know, medical attention and things well, like that. You know, well, so, that's, that's yeah. noble uh, as yeah. far as the insurance companies are concerned, but well, I'm yeah. worried. I'm very worried about bailing out, mm -hmm. you know, a certain uh, a certain industry. I'm I'm not all about that. Uh, I yeah. think that's a, I think that's a big mistake. You remember, didn't they bail out uh, Lehman Brothers and too big to fail no. GM? Well, they didn't bail they didn't out bail. Lehman Brothers. Lehman Brothers failed, but <laughs> yeah, we they did, did bail out. They did bail out, out JM, on. though. Yeah, they did. And I, I was against that. I thought, hey, you know, we don't have Pontiacs or DeSotos or, well, you know. <laughs> let's slow down. Let's slow down. <laughs> well, they didn't we really have to slow down. The... We have to slow down because we got 10 seconds left. So, oh, okay. fine. So well, let's hold okay. it. We'll hold that till the top of the hour, okay? Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Got to go.
Bye-bye. All right. Take care. Thanks for the call. Mike, thanks for being here. Always a pleasure. Uh, everybody, is it, it's a great day to, uh, to turn your computer off and enjoy the people you love. That's it. All right. We'll be right back. Six minutes after the hour of 8 o'clock, it's Thursday, March 12th, 2020, and uh, we're brought to you by the Club Tavern and Grill. They are in the uh, Best Western Grand Tree on North 7th. Uh, tell them Tom and Shane sent you in. They are a great place to eat. And uh, Shane, a uh, little clarification on our last call uh, about uh, uh, bailing out the cruise lines, airlines, uh, GM, Lehman Brothers, uh, and that we'll take a, uh, after we finish with that, we'll take a little trip down memory lane. Those are, uh, so go for it. Someone was commenting about the government bailing out the banks in 2008. That's not what they did. Um, um, they forced or lent money to the banks. Uh, they didn't put any conditions on it, which they should have. So they, they assumed the banks would use the money to lend to people, small businesses, and so so forth. Uh, that's not what they did. What they did is they issued stock to the to the government, which helped them and their balance sheet. And then they took the cash and they bought the stock market. Um, the industries that they did bail out was the car industry, um, all of whom would he paid the country company. Paid the government back, particularly Chrysler. Uh, Leo Iacocca was in charge at that time, if you remember. And uh, so the, the government got their money back, and uh, all things looked great and, and wonderful. But, you know, the the, uh, the end result was that banks became too big to fail, and and now there is a problem. Yeah. Well, also the bondholders uh, uh, that GM suffered uh, pretty good. Uh, in that's, that, that's right. In yeah, that deal, because, you know, yeah. it wasn't it wasn't all roses and uh, lollipops for sure. No, they went into bankruptcy yeah. and, and had to resolve those issues. But uh, yeah. the, at the end of the day, they were saved. Yeah. Were, and and the auto industry was consolidated. Mm. But uh, anyway. yeah, well, and Chrysler was sold overseas. So <laughs> well, well, that was the beginning. Yeah, and that was the beginning of the Obama Biden uh, eight years and twelve million ch- you know jobs went to Canada, Mexico, and China. Yeah. So there you go. All right. Let's take a call. 522-TALK is the number. Caller, you're on the air. What's your name? What's going on? Well, it probably wouldn't be good manners for Daniel R. Peterson to get a big spiel about the economy. So the only thing I've got to say is uh, uh, you had a quote earlier last hour. Nobody saw that this was going to happen. Not true. I know I've been questioning uh, the stock market for decades. Uh, so uh, please uh, remember that there are minority voices around. and You can't think that everybody is uh, heading in the same direction happily. Nobody saw the virus coming. Well, the virus is a speck compared to if, if the stock market is built on sand like I uh, uh, propose uh I don't see why anybody get into something that's uh, full of insider uh, uh, manipulation. Yeah, well, that this proves it. There's no insider manipulation, or otherwise the stocks would stay up. Well, uh, yeah, but one of the things that they say is there's a lot of shifting of the money around. It's going to be shifted into the pockets of those that uh, are on the inside, and take it away from those little people that don't have much power that are far on the periphery. Well, I, I'm not going to go into this every single day, you know. <laughs> yeah. it, it is what it is, you know. So, you know, we'll we'll agree to disagree on uh, markets yeah. being built on anything. Uh, so thanks for the call. All right. I'm not going there, but. But I do want to go back to March 2nd, 2009, Shane. Yeah, the market was at a low. It was at 9,600. Mm-hmm. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the banks were watching this happening and, and mm-hmm. because of the anticipation mm-hmm. of still others to collapse. Because it, it was still an open game. No, again, the, the market was projecting the future. Mm-hmm. And when they, when they saw comfort in the market and in the bottom, they jumped. And they made a mm-hmm. huge amount of money. Yeah. Well, back on March 2nd, 2009, uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average plunged below 7,000 Monday for the first time in more than 11 years as investors grew even more pessimistic about the health of banks 
and in turn the economy, a staggering $61.7 billion in quarterly losses to insure AIG, if you remember those guys. Uh, the, uh, the worries pushed the blue chips below 7000 for the first time since October 28, 1997, and then below 6900 for the first time since May 1, 1997. And the uh, credit crisis and recession have now slashed half the average's value since it hit a record high, a record high, Shane, of 14000 in October of 2007, a record high of Mm -hmm. 14,000. And investors are fleeing uh, financials um, after the government said it would give AIG another 30 billion in loans besides the 150 they already gave it. And uh, European financial companies are uh, strained. And in early afternoon trading, the Dow fell 249 points or 3.5%. To 68.1379. And that was the last time it closed below uh, 7,000 since 1997. So if you think we're in trouble now, imagine what it was then. <laughs> you know, well, we, haven't lost, we haven't lost half of the market by no, any stretch. Yeah. AIG is a special case and not uh, yeah. in a, one of those dirty little hidden secrets. Real quick. Yeah. Um, under the Reagan administration, uh, pub- public government uh, unions stopped self-managing their money and turned it over to AIG. So AIG, you know, for o- almost 20 years had been responsible for the uh, government employees' retirement funds and those retired and paying them monthly benefits. So the federal government of the United States certainly couldn't let that insurance company go down because everybody that worked for the federal government for the last hundred years that was still alive wouldn't have gotten a paycheck. So that, that's really the only bailout that you can reference in, in 08, 09 that mm-hmm. was really significant and very one-sided. So anyway, I just want to mention that because it's history and it is important to know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. by, by the way, the last caller, just for, you know, Again, you and I have warned people for six to nine months, and even Mike, of, of the overvaluation of this market, and that there would be a correction. And I mean, so if you if you were if you went through sixty eight, seventy two, eighty seven, oh eight, you you would have been out of this market four weeks ago. Yeah. I mean, you just would have. Mm-hmm. You you would have if you hadn't gone to half cash, you know, ten percent bond to twenty percent bond and half cash and like uh, you know, twenty or thirty percent in stock, then you know it, it, it. Then you just have to wait. Like you know, you, now you have to wait because mm-hmm. if you had, you'd be in cash and you'd be buying back the same stocks you sold three three weeks ago cheaper. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> That's all that would happen. There you, you didn't. Yeah. So there you go. From our text line four seven eight eight two nine eight. Earlier in the week, Daniel J said he invested heavily in weed eater equipment to the tune of a couple thousand bucks. When did a couple thousand bucks become uh, consider considered heavily invested? Uh, he uh, has proven time and again he just doesn't get it. Uh, you got to have empathy for someone as pathetic as that. Uh, remember last week when Trump was self-praising himself for closing borders and there were only five cases and we'd be zero by now? No, I don't remember Trump ever saying anything close to that. No. Uh, we were given a month's warning and Trump, uh, t- regime ignored it and, uh, chose to tweet it away. Now we can happily, uh, take it away. Uh, a month's warning away. from who? Yeah. Uh, from who? Like, well, we who? knew, we knew, uh, uh, of the outbreak in China. And yeah, but we in, knew that, and he yeah. took action. So like, yeah, in January, he cl- yeah, in January, he imposed the uh, the uh, travel ban. Travel ban. So yeah. yeah, so you know, give me a break. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the quick Daniel R. Peterson call. Okay, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, let's see. Uh, look at me packing up my family to escape free market capitalism. <laughs> so <laughs> said no one ever. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Uh, Trump was right in our dependency on imports uh, is an unsound policy. Yeah. He yeah, was. So, so you're right. Uh, Tom, I know my text uh, may have been uh, too likely to read on the air. All I ask is you gentlemen to speculate a little which sector should recover quickly and why. Well, I think uh, uh, 
Mike answered that. Um, uh, all I'm asking is for, you, for is for your informed opinion, not specific financial advice. It is wise um, your uh, meaningful speculation. I'm asking for. Thank you for your time. Well, we did we did try to answer that that uh, the uh, you do the research and the uh, the companies that have weathered this the best are probably where you wanna where you wanna keep your money. Or yeah. or, or in, as a sector, what yeah. was the worst sector that has the best opportunity on a leverage basis of recovering? Yeah. Mine, mm-hmm. uh, looking at the numbers, and I'm doing this now all the time because there's going to yeah. be one, I think, mm-hmm. is the energy sector. Yeah, what's because the— Because it, it oils off so significant, and the prices of those stocks have dropped so significant mm-hmm. that, I mean, that, that they could actually be the lead to this, yeah. you know, in my mind. I, and that's just an opinion. Yeah. Yeah, what's the— uh... Uh, what's the best house in the worst neighborhood? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's kind of that's what you're what looking you're for. Yeah, that's what you're exactly. looking for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, terrific analogy. Yeah, that's what you're looking for. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Uh, back to our text line. Uh, Senate Republicans block expanding sick pay leave, but are up in arms about Democrats questioning intelligence of cutting funding for Medicare to fix this. And I don't believe anybody's talked about cutting Medicare. Not a word. Not a and word payroll. about cutting. Yeah, they're cutting payroll. <laughs> payroll uh, taxes, which yeah. is a great idea because it's it, it's yeah. it's imminent. I mean, it's instant. Yeah. So the the, the mm-hmm. people that are getting the mm-hmm. benefit is, is, is they get it like tomorrow, not yeah. not a month or six months or a promise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, they get it right away. And yeah, uh, yeah does it hurt the government uh, on as its income mm-hmm. as far as its income? Yes, but. Yeah. Uh, the, the the bottom line is is that it, you you have to provide the opportunity for a recovery because you're going to need it because <clears throat> no matter what anyone wants to say you're right there the, the, the GDP isn't going to be as strong in at the end of the first quarter meaning February and March mm-hmm. and when those numbers come out in April and May it's not going to be good and the market will have projected that in the prices you're seeing in the market now. And if this is still happening in April and May, going into the summer, then the bull market will continue. But if there's a turnaround, if there if there's a turnaround on the virus and it shows weakness in that it doesn't survive well um, in in uh, warmer weather, that's great. But now they're saying tests are showing that it survives. Not not only does it survive well in warm and humid temperatures, that it accelerates in growth. So, I mean, mm-hmm. if this thing continues through the summer, oh, my gosh, yeah, this could be really bad. Yeah, it could be really bad. From our text line, 4788298, uh, can Mike explain how a payroll tax cut uh, gets people to go out of their houses and buy stuff? Well, if you've got more money, you buy stuff. I mean, that's what yeah. you do. I don't, I don't know. You either save it or buy it. Uh, so right. if you do either one, it benefits the economy. So, whether you put it in the bank or go out and uh, blow it, at, uh, you know, uh, on a meal or whatever. So uh, I don't know. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, after the 1918 uh, flu pandemic uh, came the Roaring Twenties. <laughs> There you are. Right. Yeah. That's absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, the industry uh, popped, uh, industry popped up, and uh, away we went. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that, that, excuse me, that was a whole shift of the rural agrarian economy to the urban industrial economy. It mm-hmm. started in 1880 and it, you know, it hit its, it hit its stride in 1920. So there yeah. you go. Yep. Well, that's pretty, pretty simple, but, but yeah, uh, going back to, um, going back to 2009, um, you know, we were at 6,000 in the stock market. Yeah. I mean, think about that. We're at 20, we're at twenty one now. We were at right. we were at six thousand. The record at the time was fourteen. That's right. So, <laughs> okay, uh, you know when the when the uh, government uh, uh, what is it the uh, uh, the government budget office? Yes, they sit down and they predict what's going to happen for ten years. Do you think they sat down and said, "Well, you know, everything's going to be great except if a virus comes along"? <laughs> That's right. Exactly. I, and 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 you, you let's put it in perspective. I mean, we're talking nine, two thousand nine. Yeah. So that's when the market hit the bottom was in March. Mm-hmm. I think it was sixteenth or fifteenth of March, yeah. two thousand nine. And so we're eleven years later. Yeah. 
it's it's just barely a decade. Yeah. Well, we were talking. And, we were talking in 2018. Did uh, did the Congressional Budget Office figure the whole financial market was going to go south? No. In their predictions of what stuff was going to cost over 10 years. So please, <laughs> I you know these 10 year predictions are just crap. They just of course are. They are. All right, we got to take a break. We're getting behind here. So, all right. We'll be right back right after this. We got a caller waiting on the line. Caller, let's uh, go to the phones. Caller, you are on the air. Couldn't hear him. All right. Okay. Let's see. Uh, somebody was talking. Uh, well, they they sent a text back, Shane, about the five cases that <laughs> Trump claimed he had the five cases. Well, I just did the fat check on that. January 29th, cases have been reported in 17 countries. In China, the outbreak has sur surpassed that of SARS, five cases are confirmed in the U.S. Trump tweeted, just received a briefing on the coronavirus in China from all of our great agencies who are working closely with China. We will continue to monitor the ongoing developments. We have the best experts anywhere in the world, and they're on top of it 24-7. He didn't say anything about we only have five cases, and it's contained. So That's right. give me a break. Exactly. Well, let's go back to the phones. Call you on the air. What's up? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Barely, but yeah, okay. I can hear you. <laughs> I'm actually more worried about your phone system than I am about the virus. <laughs> well, yeah. I answered your call, and you weren't there, so. <laughs> yeah, but this, this thing is, been, uh, Shane can zoom in. Anyway, the fortunes will be made in the testing company. Well, they probably will be, yeah. Well, we've already seen uh, Kodaks uh, that uh, I alerted Shane to check out for us, and they've they're up three hundred and sixty four percent, I think, uh, from uh, their where they were earlier. While you're talking, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you can find out who's who's got the lead on the testing company, and if you listen to the crackpot beer monger conspiracy theorists, they were onto this thing in January. You would have sold high and got out before. And and don't tell you me that nobody's been warning you about a virus. You've been watching zombie apocalypse movies for Well, that's years. true. Yeah, we've had the we've had the zombie apocalypse apocalypse movies for a long time. Well, that's all about an airborne virus. No, yeah, well. Anyway, I'm done. All right. Thanks for the call. All right. All right. Uh let's see. Um boy. What else we got going on, Shane? We should probably do some local news, don't you think? I mean, we are a local station here. We should do something in the last last uh, part of our part of our show here. <laughs> well, the big thing is that um, uh, MSU uh, they they were going to have a big conference here. Four thousand students and faculty members from uh, all around the nation were uh, supposed to come uh, here on March twenty sixth. Uh, through the 28th, and that's been canceled because of the coronavirus, that we don't want a, a whole bunch of people coming in here that might be contaminated to our uh, to our uh, little uh, hamlet here. So uh, they've decided uh, they're not going to do that, and uh, that's, a, that's a sad thing because uh, it would be, uh, uh, you know, it'd be, uh, it's a shame that we have to react that way. And uh, U.S. stocks uh, plunge. Italy and Iran are the new front line, Shane. Uh, both of them just kind of treated this pretty lackadaisical and uh, didn't do much about it. And now they're paying the price. That's right. And it, it, when you look at it, it's it's a, a remarkable thing. You know, I'll tell you, the other thing I find really remarkable, too, is th th this rate cut. Um, you know, the banks aren't showing a lot of empathy with what's going on. A 30-year fixed rate right now are averaging at 3.5%. Mm -hmm. You know, that it, it should be at 25 at least. Yeah. You know, and, and a 15-year fixed rate is at 3%. And that and that should be at 2 right now, you know, for a bank, mm -hmm. you know, for, on a 15-year rate. So uh, th this is one of these things that, you know, we haven't had a lot of discussion about. and. And, you know, we could actually do it and berate the banks about the you know, benefit of, how, you know, how they operate specifically. And, you know, yeah. you know, your money's in that bank and mm -hmm. if you put a thousand dollars in there. They get to lend nine thousand dollars. Yeah. And, and they're paying you one and a quarter percent. Yeah. And they're lending it out three and a half to five. Because mm -hmm. that's your best people getting three and a half percent in 30 years. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, you got to give that credit to. Uh, yeah, that. exactly. Yeah, sure. So I. 
you know, yeah. you're, you, most people out there are probably looking at four, four and a half percent on on a thirty year mortgage. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, how are the banks helping this out? I I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Help me. Help me. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, from our text line, 4788298, did the Republicans consider an economic downside when they gave that tax scam in 2017? What could go wrong? A pandemic. Well, try to imagine how worse, how much worse it would be if a uh, corporation were paying 35% tax and uh, tried to compete on the world market with yeah. a pandemic. So please, uh, take an economics course, maybe. <laughs> Somebody do something. Read <laughs> yeah, a book. Read a book. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back right after the news at the bottom of the hour. Montana State News, Brent Foster Weather. And, of course, you got to know about ZipRecruiter and Lasix and all that stuff. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with the final half hour of the Morning Soapbox with Tom and Shane. 24 minutes for the top of the hour. And, uh, well, let's see, Shane, in uh, other news, the uh, schools want another tax co uh, tax hike. <laughs> That's right. More money. More money. More money. Uh, Livingston also. Livingston wants uh, school levies also on the May ballot. So uh, we'll right. we'll see what the voters think of uh, think of that. Uh, we just got we voted for the new high school. We voted for another uh, elementary school, I believe. And uh, now, well, here we are once again. We're looking at all the. All the uh, school levies and uh, things that are going on. In other news, uh, Galton, uh, Galton County is looking at billboards on the on the Big Sky uh, route. Uh, they've uh, talked about uh, should we have billboards there or should we uh, see the pristine? Uh, you know, a lot of people go down 191. And, well, and, and, and of course, you know, they're talking about the 21st century billboards, which are electric. They're that's electronic. true. Yeah, there are all kinds of, you know, uh, yeah, so there the, are all kinds well, of They distract deal. people because, you know, it's a, it's a TV. It's a giant, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I just, I just wish I had one of those uh, multiple channel changers. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You know, go out there and park on the highway and watch a movie. Yeah, right? you could, yeah, you could yeah, be like a little mini drive-in, sort of. A little mini drive-in. <laughs> yeah, a little par couple parking places there yeah. and, you know, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah, for people. Everybody the... gets out, opens up the back of their pickup trucks, and they start having a party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> From our text line four seven eight eight two nine eight, you missed the point. Uh, companies were healthy before the tax scam. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. <laughs> I mean, there was a there was an uneven playing field all over the world. Are you kidding exactly. me? Exactly. Jeez, give me a break. And and it was purposely set up by Ob by Biden yeah. and Obama so that companies would move offshore. Well, yeah, they, they increased corporate taxes. Ob Obama did sure because they had to pay for all the entitlement programs that exactly. uh, they wanted. So I mean, come on, why would yeah. You know, yeah, companies go where money's the best? Where you make the most money? I mean, it's yeah. like money, money running to because it's chicken. It works mm -hmm. both. Ways. But now is the time to use tax cuts. Well, I'm sorry. You got you. You've got how many Democrats calling for free everything? <laughs> you, you tell me they're going to cut taxes. I well, I, this is the one thing I love the most about that whole argument about free everything. Yeah. Why has why didn't Bernie or any other Democrats say no taxes? Yeah. Yeah. We don't need it. Okay. We don't need taxes, and then you can afford to go to school. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no problem. Right. Yeah. Let's take a phone call. 522-TALK is the number. Call you on the air. What's going on? Yeah, good morning. Say, I want to uh, mention, you know, you're talking about <clears throat> schools needing more revenue and stuff like yeah. that. Just think of how much revenue they are not going to get now that the coal is not going to China and the pipelines uh, up here will be shutting down because there's an overabundance. Mm -hmm. uh, just think of all that coal tax revenue and all that oil revenue that the, the Montana will not be getting the next couple, three months or quarters, whatever. So, True. Yeah. It's something to think about. Amen. Something to think about. Now, everyone's going to have to tighten their belt, uh, including sure. the schools and parks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Real good. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. 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 Those stupid parks, man. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> here well, we go. I, you know, we just have a huge problem with that here with environmentalism and everything, the green movement here. You know, we're a commodities based com country. Wood, oil, minerals, right? That's food. That's what we generate a GDP on. <laughs> that's right. And, and and that's what most jobs are created for. So when yeah. you start shutting down mining and you prevent 
My, yeah. you know, hard rock mining or coal mining or any kind of mining or, yeah. you know, anything happens to the logistics or infrastructure of food, yeah. you know, or, or you don't let people cut trees down, yeah. which are renewable. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, What's the deal? Hey, if you, if you have a park, put an oil derrick on it. What the heck? Yeah. And I'd like to remind <laughs> everyone, the only two open borders left in your country are Mexico and Canada. Yeah, that's true. Everything else shut. All right. I got to take another break. We'll be right back right after this. Hang on. 15 minutes before the top of the hour. It's Thursday, March 12, 2020. 28 degrees outside. Looking for a high of 39 today. This is the award-winning uh, KMMS Morning Soapbox with Tom and Shane. Brought to you by the Club Tavern and Grill there in the Best Western uh, Grand Tree on North 7th. Uh, stop in there. Check them out. Tell them Tom and Shane sent you down. It's where the locals go. And... Uh, from our text line, Shane, uh, the Montana News. This is from Dana. The Montana News, Northern News Network guy is full of it. He just said Trump started the trade war with China. The truth is, as Alex Jones puts it, Alex Jones puts it, the globalists using China started the global trade war against the USA 30 years ago, and the USA never took the field uh, to uh, play the game until just now when Trump came along. Uh, when Trump came along for 30 years, we've been uh, letting China take our industrial base. Uh, I watched them do it as I haul steel on semi-trucks in and out of Pittsburgh in the 70s, and it made me sick to watch the USA getting raped by China with the help of the Clintons and others. Kicked off the Montana news people and put on some truth. Okay. Well said, I guess. <laughs> Pretty and good. Well huh? made. Yeah. Well, and not... we covered the fact that uh, Clinton, in his first administration, allowed uh, China in the World Trade Organization. Mm -hmm. And that was a disaster. And then they did NAFTA, which was his baby. Yeah. And uh, Obi uh, Biden and Obama in continued it. They said they were going to change it, did nothing. Mm -hmm. the, the bottom line is, is that the Democrats have never been a benefit to the middle class, a blue collar worker. Or, or the absolute benefit, any benefit to to uh, the the glories of capitalism in in North America. Yeah, they, they shared it with China, and as you look, you and I have been saying this for years, especially on Saturday, if China had the freedoms we had, well, you and I kept saying, can you imagine? Oh, what they, what they would do! I can't even begin. talked about it for years. Medicine, uh, ah. mathematics, uh, health. Uh, I I can't even imagine. Uh, the advances they could make if they had our freedoms with a and billion people right. working on it. Right. And we talked mm -hmm. about how much they'd already gotten oh, and yeah. the dangers we've warned. We talked about this, you and I, for 10 years. But the bottom line here is Canada is one of its biggest commodities, toilet paper. So don't worry, <laughs> folks. America's well, safe. You'll have all the toilet paper coming from, from Canada. From Canada. Canada. All right. <laughs> well, boy, you've taken a load off my mind because uh, I'll so. just, you just send me a couple rolls every once in a while when I need it then. All right, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's take a phone call. 522-TALK is the number. Call your other morning soapbox with Tom and Shane. What's up? Well, good morning, Tom and Shane. Hey, Pete. How you doing? I'm doing good. You know, I, I, I slept in today. I just want to rub that in a little bit. Yeah. Uh. Okay. You don't get to. <laughs> <laughs> You're so dangerous. You're dangerous. But you know, last last night, the news last night, they talked to all about this uh, mm -hmm. this uh, gal from Maryland. You know, who had been in Montana since November. Yeah. And they said a little bit about um, these foreign these students from MSU studying overseas that were coming home. Yeah. They only mentioned one guy in particular. They didn't say how many. They didn't say if they were testing them. They didn't say nothing. And Italy, I think, right now is probably the worst of yeah, all. Yeah, they're, the they're over 10,000, yeah. 10,000, 10, 10,149, 631 dead. Right. See, the eagle man will always get it right. Yeah, I got he, it, see, man. he sees it from above. France That's is right. in second place, 1784 with 33 dead. Yeah. I'm just wondering, you know, if there, people are getting tested everywhere, why aren't these people tested? Yeah. You know, it makes you stop and wonder. Well, the numbers don't speak to the uh, um, N1 uh, or I, I, in, uh, the, the flu virus from nine, uh, 09, okay, Pete? And that, you, you, know, you know numbers. 
I, I'm yeah. worried that these numbers are this high, but that it's such an alert. There's mm -hmm. something about the virus that I think that, like Tom said, well, you don't want to tell people, you know, if it's replicating or, you know, it, you know I mean, you'll cause <laughs> massive panic. Well, something's What's really mutating? not. Yeah. <laughs> what, what are they not telling us that's dangerous about this virus? Mm -hmm. Because well, somebody mutating. knows. <laughs> That they're not saying much about that, and you know, apparently, and I've heard this in several different places, that the, the the virus, the strain in Italy, is worse. That's exactly that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I don't think it's the same uh, strain everywhere. I you know, that's what I'm, I no. think it's replicating differently. Yep, I agree. And, yeah. and that's what the numbers are are showing. I mean, Italy was getting, they said, a thousand new cases a day in Italy. That's right. Mm -hmm. now, that, that's a lot of new cases. It, it, and yeah, know. and I, so I don't, yeah, there's something, because you know, you and I both know, you listen to Tom and I for years, and you, we, we know the market, and we know how the market, you know, um, you know, we have callers call up and say the market's rigged, and they, they trade on insider information. No, not entirely, but they do trade on information that they may gain from different industries or, you know, people that work in those industries and so forth. And, I, and blatant, I just think the most blatant thing in the market here in the last couple, three years has been the number of people who turn themselves in and say, yeah, we're rigging the silver market. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not stocks, commodities. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I don't think any of them have gone to jail. I mean, I mean <laughs> and they confessed. I think most of them were from Goldman. Well, so, probably, yeah. but we 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 know that story because how little there is, you know, physically. So, you know that that that's been a whole a avenue of at or you know, a whole part of the the story of the price of gold. But anyway, the, I, I just think that what we're watching here is uh, uh, trying to project the, the future economic value of the, of the effect of the coronavirus. And Tom wants to go to break, so you and I have to be quiet now. Yeah. <laughs> we, have to play, right. we have to play nicely in the sandbox, please. Yeah, thanks well, for the call, man. Find out what they're doing with them students. All right, I will do that. <laughs> thanks for the call. Jay, we got a caller waiting. If uh, you will take care of them, I got to get the Rush update in here and some other things. So we'll be right back. Here's Rush. Well, we got about two minutes uh, for a phone call here. Caller, you on the air. What's going on? Two quick things. Yeah. Um, regarding Italy and coronavirus, Rush, if the information Rush was relating yesterday is accurate, there's been a tremendous amount of economic and uh, international travel activity between Italy and China right. as being the main reason. And then secondly, on a different subject slightly, in terms of abstractions, uh, if you visualize a circle and divide it into three segments, like a pie, 120 degrees yeah. uh, mm -hmm. under yeah. the American uh, Constitution, Everything outside of that 120 degrees is everything pertaining to socialism and communism. And our Democrat Party is operating and functioning outside of that 120 degrees that where our Constitution resides. No matter what they say, no matter how they title it, no matter what they claim their name is, they are not democratic socialists. Their behavior, their words, their actions, all are communistic and Stalinistic. So say what they want. Their behavior says otherwise. That's all right. Hey, thanks for the call. All right, we're out of time, Shane. <laughs> you, Mayor, look forward to talking with you and everyone. Thanks for all the calls. Live in the moment. Be happy. Live to work. Be safe. And God bless everyone in the Gallup Valley. And you, Eagle Man. All right, man. Thanks so much. All right. We'll see everybody tomorrow, Friday, right, Shane? Uh, yeah, we're ready for that. All right, man. Thanks a lot. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us. The award-winning uh, KMMS Morning Soapbox brought to you by the Club Tavern and Grill. Hey, don't forget to get down there and check them out. they got breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and a kid-friendly menu. And uh, be sure and uh, check them out there in the Best Western Grand Tree on North 7th, across from Walmart. It's where the locals go. Tell them Tom and Shane sent you down there. And, uh, boy, it's been a great week here. The markets are going crazy. Uh, we got a debate coming up Sunday with uh, Biden and Bernie. So uh, we'll see how that uh, how that goes. And, uh, boy, we'll see uh, what Friday does with the markets tomorrow. So we hope uh, you'll stay with us tomorrow morning. 
And uh, we'll see everybody bright and early, 6 a.m.